Yes, we're setting up the technical here. Yes. Let me get my uh, PowerPoint up. I think we're good to go here. Can you see my screen? Okay, I'm ready if you are. Move me up here, there. Okay, thank you. Going? Okay, good morning. Hello, everyone. It is my pleasure to be here with you at the Wise Traditions annual conference um, sponsored by the Weston A. Price Foundation. And uh, I want to extend a special thank you to Sally Fallon Morrill for inviting me to present my research and creations to help everyone maintain healthy resonance. Today, we are going to explore the principles of resonance and in particular, creating states of healthy resonance. I'll share research um, that I've done, uh, including that using sound for dental issues, respiratory and autoimmune conditions, sports injuries, and um, its impact on the emotional body, and specifically how I use sound frequencies to help the body return to resonant health. Um, for those of you who are not familiar with my work, I have a background in Ayurveda and Chinese medicine. And for the past 20 years, I've been researching very specific sound frequencies and how they impact our physiology. On the left side of the screen, you see some therapeutic sound devices I've played a part in creating along with some awards and patents. And on the right side of your screen, um, you are seeing some examples of creative expression using sound that I've produced. Um, these are with sound made visible images. We call them cymoglyphs. And in my research, I have found that the images of um, beauty imprint upon our visual cortex and initiate states of calm and relaxation. And I'll explain this and uh, some research that I've done around this in just a little bit. Before I delve into the science of resonance, I'll uh, quickly share a few of my creations that I have available on the website at cymatechnologies.com for free. And the first one is one of those cymoglyphs that imprints um, on the visual cortex and initiate states of calm and relaxation. And second, if you um, just contact me through the um, website, and uh, tell me you were here at the uh, presentation. I'll be happy to share with you a short film. It's uh, again using sound made visible images and um, it's enjoyed by adults and children alike. And um, I'd love to share that with you. So please uh, contact me for free access. And um, also I'd like to offer you a PDF of this, ver um, of this presentation that I'm giving today. At some points, I'll go quite quickly. And um, if you'd like a, a PDF of the presentation, I'm happy to email it to you. Just contact me through the website. So um, many people ask what prompted me to this path of study. And um, I've documented it all in a book titled Soundflower, The Journey to Mary Science and Spirit, where I share some of the peaks and valleys of my journey. All of the images in the book are healing sounds made visible. And for those of you who are familiar with biogeometry, the book itself emits BG3 vibrations. So it's nice to have on your shelf or um, table just for the good vibes. And uh, of course the story is fun too. For this presentation, we're going to focus on resonance and my first experiences with the principles of resonance and entrainment were in a Gothic style church where the sounds of the Latin mass, the pipe organ, and the songs of the choir reverberated within the arcs and the spires and the domes. Um, after college, I traveled to India and found yet another style of resonant architecture built with specific mathematical proportions creating a force field of resonance. And when you walk into these um, types of structures, 
the field is palpable. You can feel it just instantly. Being in these structures, I felt resonance not only within the walls, arcs and domes of these structures, but also a resonance in my head. And in my chest and torso, I could feel this like resounding with the music or with the song or prayers that were spoken in this space. These mystical spaces are built on what we know as the golden mean or golden ratio. And our bodies have a special affinity for the golden ratio as we experience it daily in nature. So it makes sense that these architects would build these resonant structures on vortices we find on the earth that have naturally occurring magnetism and built so that the structures can harness sound and light. So these happen to be the three most powerful energies that we have in the universe of sound, light, and magnetics. Embedded into the architecture, we find what I call harmonic codes, images and geometries that give us further access to deep states of healing or coherence. In some cases, such as this one, we um, see a, a pillar in the Roslyn Chapel outside of, uh, in Scotland. And we also see cubes noted within uh, the ceiling, the arc of the ceiling with cymatic images. And they've recently been decoded into music. The angel here is pointing to the scale and notes. And we find that there are secrets or notations left to us throughout history, these harmonic codes for us to take note of. We call it the wisdom uh, handed down to us. And we find that this, um, these methods of, of harnessing resonance were passed down from the master architect to the apprentice throughout, throughout centuries. So creating healing spaces of resonance of sound and light for healing the body, mind, and spirit has been happening throughout the history of, of our time. And seeking resonance, healthy resonance, is not new. We find resonant architecture throughout Greece in over the 300 temples in honor of Asclepius, the, the god of medicine. And these temples are located near bodies of water to facilitate the healing process. Our bodies have a special and, and natural resonance with water as we're over 70% water. And patients would travel far and wide to visit these temples and spend uh, night after night, um, you know, maybe up to two weeks even in these temples to regain uh, uh, some healthy resonance. And in the morning, priests and priestesses would come to them and journal for them their, um, their experiences, particularly their dream states, because they found that there was uh, some real indicative uh, clues as to why they were not feeling completely coherent in their states of health. And here on the right, we see a, a representation of um, the uh, temple by uh, Ernst Bord. And today we have a field of study that has emerged, archaeoacoustics. And this is the blend of archaeology and acoustics and we see um, David Lubman's research here, noting uh, at St. Warburg's um, um, Cathedral, um, how this resonance affects our, our brain. And here we see in uh, Malta, the cave that um, people would come to and you see these little benches that people would cozy into and their spines would rest there as, as song was produced and um, their would be uh, this emitting of healing and resonant vibrations. So what happens when we enter one of these architectural resonance spaces and stand under a dome as you, you see here is you feel an actual sonic realignment in your, um, 
in your whole body. In your head, there's a, a mild buzzing and vibrations of, of waves that course throughout the body. In ancient times um, and, and texts that were left and, and we're now rediscovering, and of course, science is confirming these texts, is that it's coherence in the five bodies, the physical and the subtle bodies, that takes place automatically when we're in these types of environments. Today, researchers tell us we need coherence in all of the bodies for a complete healing experience. And this information is not new. Throughout history, the interplay of the physical and subtle bodies has been known. In the Vedic times, uh, these bodies have been known as the five koshas. And at certain points throughout history, they became known as the auric fields. And in just the past couple of decades, the term human biofield has been accepted by the NIH as a scientific term. My research of the vibrational world was given a specific scientific explanation when I came to know the work of Dr. Hans Yeni, a Swiss medical doctor and natural scientist. And Dr. Yeni was a professor at the, um, at, the, at the Rudolf Steiner College. And it was Yeni who began to use modern technology to make sound visible. He coined the term cymatics for his field uh, of study, the study of wave phenomena. And today we say that cymatics is the science of making sound visible. He actually coined the term cymatics, which comes from the Greek word kima, which means wave. And as I was introduced to Yeni's work in 2001, I could see in the material world what I hadn't seen before, um, the vibratory wa waves that I had witnessed as a child were coming to life in, in his experiments. And uh, my memories of the geometric symbols that I saw in the Gothic cathedrals and the temples in India came to life. And it also brought back um, words from my childhood that I had heard from the Bible, in the beginning was the word, and uh, gave, uh, gave way a deeper understanding for me, which science is now confirming that our um, ancient scriptural text, and that is um, sound begets light. Then I met a British osteopath path, um, Dr. Peter Guy Manners, and he was a member of a collaborative group of scientists and researchers, and they had discovered over 750 frequency patterns affecting the physical and emotional states of health. And each of these codes were emitting five frequencies, and they were using acoustic sound, uh, not electromagnetic, uh, electromagnetic waves. And the sounds that they were using were to support and balance the body. They weren't to destroy pathogens. And this made complete sense to me because when we bring the body back into balance, then the body uses its own intelligence to uh, work its own magic. And how they were applying these specific sound frequencies were through a specific type of transducer. And um, I found that this was sending a cellular communication in a different way than what we receive when we use a headset. And so here on the, the right side of the screen, um, I... Um, want to share that these five frequencies correspond to different organ and tissue systems in the body. So there's a special quintet or a special five strand harmonic that correlates to the liver and another special one for the pancreas and another one for the thyroid and the kidneys and so on. 
And so I went to work in the clinic using this type of sound, and I was using it specifically for people who were coming for pain relief, either physical or, or emotional pain. And what I found in follow-up visits is that this type of therapy of using these audible sounds consisting of, of five frequency patterns were having a all whole body effect, that they were reporting um, benefits in other areas of their lives. So they would come for pain in their physical body and uh, for like tissue, torn tissues and, and um, fractures, et cetera, sports injuries that had lots of swelling and inflammation and scar tissues. And they would say that their respiratory uh, system was working better. People with COPD were breathing better. The asthma was dissipating. Um, the digestive system was working better. They were getting better sleep. And oh my goodness, but good sleep is, is uh, not to be underrated at all because that's when the body goes into its deep restoration process. And um, the periodontal and the teeth and the hair, anxiety and depression were subsiding. And their eyesight, the people were saying they could see better. Their hearing was a little better. And the sexual function, um, men were, were reporting that their lives were their wives were happy again because of these issues being resolved. And um, we had some um, young women who were having fertility issues. And after the second or third month of, of coming, um, they had uh, become pregnant. So that was a good thing. So what I saw is that all of these um, these systems were coming on board by just relieving the stress and pain. And as I looked more closely at to what this sound was doing, it began to make sense um, to me of using these five specific frequencies, these harmonic codes, were kind of massaging all of the systems back into their um, optimum um, operation. And this particular type of sound is using sine waves and we find these sine waves in nature. And um, so it's kind of like these were sine wave sound formulas and the body's own intelligent was, intelligence was taking it to different areas where it needed to be relaxed, where there were areas of congestion, um, the body seemed to get back on board. So I began to um, expect these common responses from people that they would report that they were getting better quality of sleep. And again, sleep is a good night's sleep is not to be underrated. Um, when we don't get good sleep, where um, the body doesn't drop into its restoration process, um, we wake up cranky, irritable, we don't make good decisions. Um, they were reporting better digestion. They um, weren't as stressed. People who they were in challenging um, relationship with, their buttons didn't get pushed so easily. And um, we know that that's a really uh, wonderful thing to experience. Uh, sports enthusiasts were saying that they were having fast muscle recovery with little or no soreness. And people who just were not feeling their vitality uh, any longer were saying that they had an increase in energy levels. And we did do a short um, six week study on people who were overweight, um, overweight of at least 75 to 150 pounds. And what we found that in the end, they all reported that somehow or another, they were making healthier food choices. And when we're not stressed, we're not, when we're not filled with anxiety, we stay in this um, prefrontal cortex, our executive functioning, and make better decisions. We're resonant here, rather than when we lose this loop, uh, we revert back to the uh, reptilian brain and maybe we don't make um, the best decisions at the moment. <clears throat> Excuse me. So now I'd like to share with you uh, one of the subjects 
that uh, is a prime example of, of what in many of my cases, uh, this is a businesswoman who owned an art gallery and she came in for pain relief. She's a breast cancer survivor in remission and a staple in the chest wall during the breast reconstruction was causing her pain. And she wanted to see if there might be alternative therapies to help her deal with the pain rather than undergo another surgery. In Ayurveda and Chinese medicine, we always ask about the emotional component that may be related to injury or a health condition. And she reported that she felt emotionally fine with all the trauma that she had met with in her past. And if anything, she was experiencing a bit of frustration, a bit of artist block. So after her 30 minute session, I asked her to report to me within 24 hours, as I do with all patients, um, how she was doing either by email or phone. And I did not hear from her. I didn't hear from her for three days. And so finally on the third day, I reached out and contacted her and she said, oh, she had just arrived home that after she visited um, me in the office, that she drove straight to her studio and had been painting for three days straight. She was so inspired that she had painted her whole fall collection and she invited me to the opening. On the opening night, I noticed the whole collection were various poses of the Buddha. And in conversation, I told her that I, I didn't realize that she was a Buddhist. And she replied that she wasn't. And that this was the first time that she had painted anything with a spiritual theme. Gazing at images of the Buddha make us feel calm and peaceful. And how wonderful that the relief of pain opened this window of creativity. When we're out of pain, we have access to all kinds of energy, joy, and inspiration. Now, she copied me on an um, email that she wrote to her doctor. Uh, she says, as a highly respected plastic surgeon, I ask that you look into this therapy, not only for my benefit, but also the benefit of your patients. After the first treatment, I felt so aligned and my body was no longer in pain and my senses were vastly improved. In fact, the treatment affected my neural and nervous system causing a mild kind of ecstatic shiver. Clearly, she had a release of the pain that had plagued her and moved into a coherence of her physical and subtle bodies, accessing a higher state of consciousness and expressing this through her art. In the texts of Ayurveda and Chinese medicine, each of these bodies has its own sound. So, I was connecting this to the five frequencies. Quantum physics confirms the interplay of these fields. When they all come into coherence, this is where the complete healing takes place. The geometry of five, those five frequencies, the five elements, the five bodies, the physical, etheric, mental, emotional, and spiritual coherence. I believe this is the reason I was seeing the results in all the different conditions. And modern science continues to validate what the ancient traditions have long espoused. Here we see from the Niels Bohr Institute, scientists report that our nerves use sound, not electricity. And in the work of Drs. Uh, Fritz Pop and Anthony Fleming on the biophoton and biophonon, their work explains how sound is the precursor to electrochemical action. That sound creates the structure for light. So through my findings, I was committed to finding a way to help more people. With all the knowledge and experience thus far, I created a user-friendly device, 
based on the energy portals at the bottom of the feet that we know well from Ayurveda and Chinese medicine, I created a foot plate, a special foot plate that served as a mega transducer. And people could rest their feet while sitting in a comfortable chair. The acoustic audible sound travels the meridian pathways known as the rivers of life. They provide the ultimate communication system in the body. And our bodies have the innate intelligence, so the sound interpenetrates all these five bodies with the 750 harmonic codes. The AMI 750 is easy to use. Um, it comes with 10 protocols of stress relief, muscle stello muscle skeletal pain, inflammatory pain, vitality for those people who just can't get out of bed. I don't recommend using this channel uh, too late in the afternoon because if you're uh, frequency sensitive, you might be organizing your closets and cleaning out your garage at 1 a.m. Uh, the anti-aging channel is based on the um, elements of uh, Chinese medicine and the, uh, their correlation to the, the major organ systems. We have channels that help support the immune system, the respiratory system, cardiovascular system, the digestive and the nervous system. So let's take a look at some common conditions and see how fast and effective this method can work. In these thermal images, we see an eight-year-old sports injury on the left leg. The red indicates the pain and inflammation present. This patient takes over-the-counter medication to sleep most nights. After 20 minutes, we see the pain and inflammation dissipate. And 25 hours later, the sound is still working. I have found that the body holds the sound imprint even longer for 48 to 72 hours in most cases. I do recommend that um, you have a few sessions close together in the beginning because this assures the cells to get, um, get back in tune, to reestablish their, their memory of their resonance. You can see the, the pad, the peripheral artery disease published study on uh, the Cyma Technologies website. Now, peripheral artery disease is a result of plaque in the arteries. And in just a moment, we'll talk about dental health. It is said that plaque on the teeth equals plaque in the arteries. And here you can see the big impact sounds can have to help turn this ship around. And Peripheral artery disease affects 200 million people nationwide, according to the American Heart Association. So this is a, a good uh, non-invasive tool um, to help people. A quick look at the power of sound on torn tendons. In these scans, we're looking at equine tissue. This is a common injury, a common occurrence in the equine world and in thoroughbred um, horse racing. And um, many horses, unfortunately, are put down due to this, um, this condition, this um, torn tendon. And it's similar to a torn Achilles tendon in a human. So if you know of any sports enthusiasts who have experienced a torn Achilles, it's pretty much the end of their sports career. And here you see a total regeneration in the tissue. This indicates the benefits we humans can expect as 30% of all people will have a tendon injury and um, the risk is higher in women according to Cornell University research. So what's really happening here? I believe that uh, the uh, acoustic meridian intelligence devices are calling the cells back to resonance. Sound creates an interconnectedness of the body-mind system. All of these systems, all of the bodies are hearing this sound and they're working together on this very important uh, interplay. And we find that it's helping to mediate pain. It decreases the inflammation process, optimizes oxygen. And I look forward to sharing a couple of experiments very shortly with that. And it stimulates nitric oxide, oops, stimulates nitric oxide, uh, helps regenerate the soft tissue, boosts the natural killer cells, which 
uh, it helps our immune system, and it reduces levels of the stress hormone cortisol. So here, I'm very excited to share with you a quick recap of two experiments showing an increase in oxygen. And uh, as we are all very interested right now in uh, maintaining oxygenated nutrient-rich blood flowing smoothly, smoothly um, throughout our bodies. Now, these experiments were done by my colleague, June, John Reed in the UK, uh, in the, the Cymoscope lab. And he was in partnership with Professor Sungjil Chi at Rutgers. The experiment consists of taking two blood samples and dividing it into two vials. One vial is um, exposed um, in a music chamber, and the other vial is put in a very, very, very silent uh, cage called a Faraday cage. The music or sound chamber um, had a variety of uh, classical, contemporary, spiritual music, um, the sound of, of the voice and the sounds from the AMI 750, a code that we call cell regeneration. And um, this code revealed the highest number of living red blood cells, higher than any of the, uh, the music selections. And so the hypothesis of this great result is that the cells regain their membrane integrity and they have an increase in the oxygenation of the red blood cells. So in the next experiment, an oxygen uh, counter was added to the protocol to validate that indeed, the live cell increase of 365% and there is an increase of over 15% in oxygen. You can read the details about um, these experiments on the Sima Technologies website. So what I found is that the AMI 750 produces five strand harmonics, creating a lattice structure around the body, the sonic sea of frequencies. And it's a very targeted approach to recharge, restore, and move beyond the physical pain and, and trauma. These thermal imaging scans are from a pilot study we did on breast health. Now, the red area indicates high inflammatory response in those regions. This subject is the wife of a chiropractic physician, and for 10 years, they have been monitoring her, and despite the nutraceuticals, IVs, lasers, all the, uh, the therapies that they have tried, um, there have been no significant turning this ship around. And so um, we see that it's, it's going in the wrong directions. And we can see that the lymph nodes in the underarm are having a difficult time and are very congested. And so this is uh, where we're at with this particular person that they were wanting to move forward with the removal of the lymph nodes. And um, so removing the lymph, the, the congested lymph nodes is part of the Western medicine protocol. Now the lymph is a very important part of our elimination system. So we would like to see if we could save these at all, if possible. So here is her, um, um, oral cavity, which um, I was very curious why, after all this concerted effort that they had put in, that there were no results. So I asked the technician to please capture a view, including the oral cavity. And here we see the evidence of crowns and fillings known to be possible locations of bacteria breeding here most likely silently over the years. And when we asked this subject if she had any dental issues that she was dealing with, she reported no, that she had been to the dentist regularly and everything was fine. So we put her on her um, protocol 
uh, as we did with all the subjects in this study. And uh, so her protocol with the AMI 750 was to sit with her feet on the device for 30 minute sessions, five times a week for the first two weeks and three times a week for the four following weeks. And here we see the welcome results in the follow-up scans. Um, the inflammatory process is greatly diminished and the lymph glands have had a chance to release and come back on board. Now her body has the reserves to tend to other body systems and move towards restoration. I did suggest that she visit her dentist for a closer look to see what might be going on in those areas where we suspect silently bacteria is breeding. And on a follow-up uh, visit, she um, reported that the issues in her emotional relationship had resolved with ease. All right, uh, on to uh, my dental research. So the saying goes, a healthy mouth equals a healthy body. Most of us at the Wise Traditions Conference are well aware of the research by Dr. Weston Price. And nutrition and diet is extremely important. My research involves sound nutrition. And in my research going forward, I began to include a closer look at the dental health history of the patients. If you visit PubMed and search oral bacteria linked to disease, you will see there are over 2000 published studies linking to cardiovascular, respiratory, neurological, and autoimmune conditions. Cardiovascular and neurological research says that plaque in the teeth equals plaque in the arteries. Respiratory research reveals that chronic infections in the lungs are a result of certain oral bacteria. Now this information is not new. The 5,000 year old medical systems of Ayurveda and Chinese medicine correlate each tooth with an organ system. And I find it very interest, interesting that today, most dentists remove the wisdom teeth automatically. And in this tooth organ chart, you will see that the wisdom teeth are related to the heart. It makes one curious to, as to the, the, the breakdown in this circuit. Could this be a reason why we see an increase in heart disease in our patient population today? Certainly worth questioning. As the studies show plaque in the teeth is related to plaque in the arteries, and that includes the pathways in the brain as well. As we see a lack of resonance here with some big trouble in the oral cavity. This case study is of an 11 year old boy with a decayed molar and its relationship to a brain abscess. So I always show this slide to my children and grandchildren to remind them to uh, maintain good sound nutrition in their diet and um, good dental hygiene. Another area that we need to be mindful of is a properly working lymph system. It is crucial for us. The lymph system comes to work at night while we're having good sleep to clear out the metabolic waste. So this is another reason why it's really important for us to fall into deep restorative sleep so that this team can come to work and, and do the, the cleanup while we are sleeping. We become aware of the lymph system sometimes when we have a little tenderness in the throat or a sore throat. Um, and these are all indications that we need to pay a little attention here. Be aware. As I shared in a previous slide in my research using thermal imaging, I could see where dental infections were causing inflammation in other parts of the body. 
So here's uh, uh, here are some cases of um, of patients, and and this woman was stunned to see her therms indicating possible infections stemming from her dental work, a couple of crowns and fillings. Now she visits her dentist regularly twice a year and her dentist compliments her on her excellent oral care. However, in this image, we see the white and red areas indicate high inflammation. We check the lymph area and see there's stagnation and buildup. After a 30-minute session on the AMI 750, we see the inflammation decrease, the area becomes relaxed, and the stagnation decreases and the lymph begins to move. Oblique views confirm the anterior views where there's trouble brewing. And the after 30 minute sound session shows the decrease in inflammation and that the lymph is starting to flow again. Here's another subject, a female in her mid seventies had a front, loose, front left tooth that was going dark along with periodontal disease diagnosed by her dentist. And here we see the baseline image with the white and red indicating the areas where the bacteria are pooling. And after a 30 minute session, things begin to move in the right direction. The oblique views show the before and after of using these specific frequencies. Now I want you to note the lymph opening up and working. After using the AMI 750 for two months, she visited her dentist and was asked what she was doing to regenerate her gum tissue. So it seems oxygenated nutrient rich blood beginning to circulate in these areas became very evident to her dentist. And sometimes there's pain, but the dentist says there's no reason for the pain, that it all looks okay. And this is the case of this woman. Um, what we've tracked in some cases like this is that sinus infections or mold exposure can cause our teeth to flag us for help. Now, I do want to say that using the AMI 750 is not a replacement for dental care. What we are doing here with these very targeted sound frequencies is managing we say managing the damage, um, but what we're using are specific sound frequencies to assist the body in keeping the rivers of life moving, flowing, oxygenated, nutrient-rich blood coursing everywhere without any stagnation. Children and pets love the AMI 750, and uh, we do charge water uh, for those of you who are aware of, of structured water and the imprinting of water and the value that the messages from water can do for our health. Um, as I mentioned earlier, in Ayurveda and Chinese medicine, um, evidence of disease or injury can be found in the energy bodies, and many times there's stagnation in the emotional body. Now that I knew what to expect in my investigations of using sound for physical symptoms, I wanted to explore technologies that might be able to show the energy field around the body. And I discovered this uh, specific camera called the PIP camera, the Poly Contrast Interference Photography Technology. And this is a special type of camera that has a special lighting, special, um, few special lenses and a special software program. And so here you see one of our subjects. We had a, um, um, pilot study of, of 10 patients, and, and this is one of them, and he's sitting in a chair with his feet on the AMI 750, and for time purposes, I'm going to condense the, um, the data and, and outline of this whole study, but um, here you see that we're, we're monitoring the change during this, but his baseline of health history, we find that he's a mechanic. And two years ago, he had surgery on his knees for pain. And unfortunately, the surgery did not resolve this pain. So he still had pain in the knees. Emotionally, his mother had passed four months ago. 
of pancreatic cancer. And it was a very turbulent and abusive relationship since childhood. He was uh, noted that he was having feelings of anger, frustration, and grief on his um, emotional inventory. And this is the success of diminishing pain and inflammation. Um, I expected this. You can see the before, uh, the pain and inflammation is evident. And then after the 30 minutes on the AMI 750, you see that um, there is relief there. And again, as I said, I, I expected this. And uh, so he was happy to see these scans that we did share with him. But I was interested in seeing what was happening in the emotional field. And um, though these scans were not shared with him because we were um, doing an investigation and uh, this was not part of, um, of our agreement in doing this pilot research, but we see here the, um, the information that I was really keen for, I was looking to see what was going on in the emotional um, fields. And so here we see a congestion in the upper chest area, indicating the grief from the recent passing of a loved one. And how interesting we see a muzzle around the mouth, indicating his being in a relationship where he couldn't speak his truth. After a 30 minute session, we see the heart is clearing and the muzzle is dissipating. We observed his release. Approximately 20 minutes into the session, it became evident that the sound had moved throughout the physical and subtle bodies. He took a big breath and dropped his head back and a slight smile became noticeable. He confirmed this success as he turned to us upon leaving the room and asked, can I return for another session? Without any talk therapy, the sound gently moved throughout his field and the subject himself recognized the shift in the energy was a step, a step in uh, towards, good, towards positive and, and the healing. On a follow-up visit, he reported that he felt so light and energized, the pain in his knees had subsided to the point that that weekend he ran a neighborhood 5K. Happy for him. So um, <laughs> the AMI 750 emits healing frequencies to bring the body's resonance back into a, a healing coherence. But what if you can't get to the AMI 750 right away? So I started having these thoughts of, of what I could do to help people quickly. And when I um, revisited my childhood, I, where I had mystical experiences inside resonant architecture, which had what I call harmonic codes engraved into the pillars and walls, I sensed that these carvings served as amplifiers of sacred and powerful energy, activated by our breath, by our song, by our prayers. Not only was it activated within the architecture of the church or the temple, but it was also activated within the cavity of our, our skull and the cavity of, of, of our torso. So I thought, what if the healing sounds from the AMI 750 were made visible and the mere looking at these images could render a pathway of healing? So I commissioned uh, my colleague John Reed in the Cymoscope Lab in the UK to make some of the sounds from the AMI 750 visible. And the healing sound frequencies reveal these beautiful images. Research tells us that looking at something beautiful provokes a response in the brain's reward pathway and generates a positive feeling. Now, since our brain processes over 400 billion bits of information a second, I connected the dot to, hey, part of this information is processed through our eyes, 10 million bits per second. It made sense to me that this could be a valuable tool to help people. 
And this would fall in the category of contemplation or the value of meditation. And there are over thousands of, of published papers on the benefits of meditation. Every from, everything from improved concentration, detoxification, and the relief of stress and anxiety. And many say that they can't meditate or they don't have uh, uh, the time to meditate or they don't know how to meditate. So I'm going to share some um, research to validate the efficacy of the method that I created with the sound made visible images that uh, were captured from the AMI 750. I created five to seven minute experiences to induce states of relaxation and restoration. These experiences are called the Soundflower Experiences, and they're based on ancient texts and techniques. Drishti means focused gaze, and it's a, a yogic technique where one focuses on specific geometries for accessing higher states of consciousness. I used this principle to create the Soundflower Experiences. Gazing at meaningful and beautiful geometries gives access to states of calm and regeneration. Gazing at these images, people see intricate patterns created by the five healing sound frequencies. And this is how the therapeutic imprint is created. Sounds, the five frequencies of health are emitted from the AMI 750 device. And these sounds are made visible as they are fed through the cymoscope into a cuvette of water. The sound made visible is observed from above this dish. We see the standing waves flowering on top of the water with the other frequencies beginning to form patterns from below. Still shots of the various stages of the sound flower are captured and layered into a visual meditation format. The Soundflower experience is a beautiful and easy tool for those who say they can't meditate, don't have time to meditate, um, or uh, don't know how to meditate. Easily and quickly, the beautiful visuals set us on a way to deep relaxation and more focus. Now, to track the effectiveness of this ancient technique adopted to a modern day method, I used an assessment device called the Veda Pulse. Many measurements are captured with this technology while the person is viewing the sound flower experience, including the heart rate variability. So here are the results of one subject. She's a 40 year old female with a health history of extreme stress, frequent migraines and PTSD. She has three young children, one with special needs, and she recently moved from one city to another. All of these rate as high stressors on stress and anxiety assessments. A quick look at her baseline stress level value is in the caution zone. And after the seven minutes of the Soundflower experience, it has dropped down 135 points, indicating that we're heading in the right direction to help her with her stress relief. Now we all have stress. It's our ability to adapt and manage that stress that is key. And looking at her ability to adapt to stress, again, we see in the baseline that she is in the caution zone. And after the seven minutes of the Soundflower experience, we see a shift, a positive shift of 15%. Again, we see that she's headed in the right direction. And many other subjects have similar responses. We, um, we observe how we can use sound made visual to regain a natural resonance very quickly and very easily. And uh, you can find uh, more comments um, of the experiences of people who have used the Soundflower experience, everything from feeling a deep uh, calming to get into meditation. Some even said that their bodies recognize the images at an innate level. So um, you can um, 
gather your your friends and have a, a, a experience together. Some families report that they gather the whole family uh, and uh, show it on a big screen. Anyway, in closing, I just want to say that I continue um, the research because I'm very passionate about helping people regain their national uh, natural resonance. And, um, you know, for uh, relief from physical and emotional pain for help turning the ship around in a big and very quick way uh, with a very targeted approach, we have the AMI 750 as a, a, a wonderful tool to maintain healthy resonance. And for short five to seven minute stress breaks, we have the beautiful Soundflower experiences, the images that enhance our cellular memory and feel good pathways. I welcome you to contact me through Cyma Technologies with any questions or comments. I'm happy to explain this. Though sound and the healing with sound resonance has been since uh, around since the beginning of time, it's sort of a, um, a new re-emergence of this field, and it's very exciting to have access to these non-invasive approaches to helping us maintain and, and regain our, our healthy coherence. In closing, uh, I encourage you to take the opportunity to receive these free tools from the Cyma Technologies website. I want to thank you for your interest in my research and the methods I've created. I appreciate the invitation to present at the Wise Traditions Conference, and my wish for you is to have sound, health, and joy. I appreciate this opportunity to share with you. Thank you very much.